Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I got another cracking haul video for you today. Some antiques, some collectibles and a bit of fun. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So stake your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm going to start off today's film with my favourite item. Now, <sighs> here it is. Uh, it was bought in Gethlige car boot sale on Sunday for £2. Now, what is it? It's a figure by the World of Grogs, John Hughes. And this is one of the older figures with the uh, signature on. Really nice uh, grog. This one is Happy 65th from your Doosan friends. And it's in lovely condition. And it's about 8 inches tall, give or take. And you've basically got a sheep wearing a Welsh rugby shirt with a rugby ball. Really nice. Now, Grogs, they've made everything from all the rugby players. They've done figures like John Wayne, Pavarotti, things like that. And they do little comical sheep with messages on, you know, keep Wales tidy, throw your rubbish in England, that type of thing. And they all pull big money. Now, I'm going to show you in a minute some of the prices for grogs some of the grogs figures some of the grog sheep and things like that i can already tell you there isn't one of these on there um and i can tell you now the price i'm going to put this on for is about 75 pounds uh and i will take offers if somebody comes in at 50 60 pound they're going to have it um if it comes in less now i'm going to consider how much interest i've got but i'm going to show you some of the prices of grogs even though there's not one of these on there okay so have a look at this you'll have a shock your life okay so all i have searched for as you can see is grog i've done sold listings so everything here has actually been sold and i've gone highest price and that's the highest price there is the english rugby player at 1270 pounds sold price that is impressive for tim rodba and again underneath 850 670 there's a Welsh one there, 500. Well, you can see the prices yourself, guys. It is astronomical money for this stuff. Now, I've been offered um, locally um, an original grog, an early grog um, of the year Neil Jenkins left Pont de Preeth. Um, I've offered £100 for it, but uh, she hasn't come back to accept it yet. But you can see some of these. I'm I'm keep going because I want you to have a look at some of the sheep and things like that, the cheaper ones, not just the uh, rugby players. But they've done special editions. I don't know if they've ever done an Elvis or anything, but they, I know they've done a Pavarotti, which sold for I think it was four or five hundred. They've done John Wayne. I know that because I've seen John Wayne. I'm gonna skip through now a few pages. Whatever the mouse is, there it is. I'm going to skip to page 3, so I want you to have a look at some of the cheaper end with the um, sheep and that. Now, bearing in mind, grogs are still being made today, but they're not being made the same as they used to. They used to be made of this um, almost clay type pottery. Uh, they even make them now out of resin. Uh, and they don't really take much of a description either as you can see look at that just a grog that is the, the title grog that's it last page and now we come to the sheep and things graham henry by there They're not all signed Grog. Some of them are just signed John Hughes. Uh, 
Right, well, where's the sheep? Well, there's a cat. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that some sort of goat? There's a little Welsh dragon. I was given a Welsh dragon um, a while back, which I still got, actually. I don't even know what that thing is. Right, let's change it then from Grog to John Hughes. Bear with me, because I want you to see the sheep. So, there we have one by there. A broad begins at Chepstow, by the looks of that, £30. There's another one by there, Comical Sheep, I can't quite read it without my glasses, tidy. Mint Sauce is a killer. <laughs> you know, some really comical uh, things. There's the Keep Wales Tidy one, throw your rubbish in England. Happiness is a warm weekend in Cardiff. But there are copies of these guys, so look out for the copies. Just quickly before I finish off on the grogs. There is the signatures and World of Grogs there. Now some of them you'll have just John Hughes. Where it says World of Grogs, you'll have John Hughes. These grogs always pull good money guys, so keep your eye out for them. They are spectacular and everybody is after them. And the crazy thing is they made literally about six, seven miles down the road from me by you. So, next piece I'm gonna show you guys is a pair of blue and white Cornish way banded salt and pepper. Now these are TG Green. They're the later mark TG Green. The mark you're looking for really for the big money is the green shield stamp and I'll show you that in just a minute when we do the research. However, a nice crew it set like this by TG Green, um, they cost me, it was £3 in Gethley Gear, uh, it was either £3 or £4. He wanted, he wanted a tenner for these and he wanted a tenner for a big jug which I'll show in another film. Now I bought the pair for 15 yeah, £15 I give for the pay. Um, but I was allocating sort of £12 to the jug, to be honest with you, and three quid to these. So, but yeah. Have a little look at the prices. Cornish Way comes in a variety of colours. I'll try and show you some different colours now in the highest price, and we'll see if we can price these Cornish salt and pepper. Okay, guys, just before we look at the sold prices, here's some of the marks produced by TG Green. This is the one you're looking for here. For the biggest money which is uh, their shield but that'll be green they also done it in black which is a little later and then you move up to the other marks but any of these marks to be honest with tg green pull good money now you take a look at these prices i've just typed tg green cornish way as you can see here highest price look at that for a breadcrumb uh, shaker 671 pounds shocking or what um arrow root candid peel so some of these more unusual ones are pulling stupid money couscous coca there's a full set there herbs and sage so you can see what i mean some of this stuff pulls good money soda the ones obviously that pull the better money got the writing on and if you can get a variety of colors they're not all blue blue is the more common of the color guys look at the prices and there we have a brown and white flower for 101 you had a flower in blue will be about 30 quid Definitely worth uh, buying, guys. I think you'll agree. Let me move on. I'm going to skip a page. I'm not going to keep going all the way through. I was hoping you'd see a few varieties of the colours. I'll probably Google it now in just a minute. There's a clock there, which was unusual. Again, brown. Oh, that one's yellow. 
looks very similar to the brown we just had rolling pins you can see it's all good money all right we got yellow there again you got green underneath <coughs> again there's a yellow one now I know they do it in red as well I'm sure they do I'm sure I've had red anyway moving along forget them a minute now I've searched just TG green salt and pepper because I want to price what I've got now obviously if they got salt and pepper on them they're 50 pound they're, they're dearer however if you look at some of these prices I come down and there's my exact pair with the exact same mark 35.99 sold price with 350 postage granted they were sold by the British Art Foundation so they may have had a bit more purely for the charity purpose but um, I'm happy enough with that and 20 quid down there let me see if I can quickly find some colours of the TG green there's a green one by there you got a black so just showing you they do come in a variety of colors there's the yellow again that is much away that's not shouldn't be coming up as TG green that's Georgian there's the red I knew they'd done it in red anyway I think you'll agree that for the money I've paid, even if I allocated them at the five and the ten for the jug like the gentleman uh, wanted, then they're certainly a good profit day. I'll probably put these on eBay today now for thirty pound and wait for an offer. Moving on, I absolutely adore this next piece. We have a period Victorian stamp box. Now this one is quite spectacular. It's got the owl over the book. You open it up, and you got the little compartments for stamps. On the front, if you can see it there, it's got a little monogram for the owner's initials. Now this one is a beautiful shape, nice patina on it, just the right way, and I love this top. Now I'm going to show you some of the more recent reproduction stamp boxes. Okay, here's a modern reproduction of an Art Nouveau stamp box. and uh, This was produced by a company called Past Times. They have the uh, sunflower on and you see these ones absolutely everywhere. Some people sell them as Art Nouveau but they are done by past times. No doubt there are original ones out there of the period that they've copied. But um, this one is clearly non-original. That is quality. That is, it's nice. It's just not the same quality about it. Now these I sell for a tenner. All day long. This one... I paid a fiver down in Cardiff off uh, the same gentleman I bought the coins from the other day and I think this one is going to sell for, well, I'll show you the prices and then I'll tell you what I'm going to put it on for but I already know it's going to be many, many times what I sell that one for. Have a little look at this. Okay guys, all I've done here now is I've searched brass stamp box, sold prices, highest first. You've got a beautiful little one here done as a coal scuttle and that was best offer accepted in 95 so you don't know what they sold it for I know you can find out but I am not registered to find out you got a nice one here looks silver mounted brass and it's a form of a book they had 48 uh, a couple of standard box ones there 45s now I've actually got two or three of these in the shop at the moment Jenny Jones ones uh, so I'll be putting mine on eBay if they pull in that sort of money. I didn't expect that to be honest with you And you'll see what I mean now in a minute with the um, The past times ones people sell them as original You can see the variety of stamp boxes coming down now somebody there has got a stamp box and a letter rack um, And they had 1750 Somebody there is selling there's a 1920s sunflower stamp box but they're not they're actually made in past times i've actually taken the past times labels off them uh, many a time purely because people won't buy them with a label on but you just sell them as a vintage stamp box and they sell in fact i'll have a look for you now if i can show you um with a past times label on 
just to show you what I'm saying. Again, there's a pair of them there, solve for 11. A single solve for a tenner. Art Nouveau style. Be very careful, they're selling a style. If I come across to page two, you can see eight pounds, seven pounds, six pounds. Some of these ones are low money luck. Okay guys, I've managed to find somebody selling one honestly and they've got it down as a vintage Art Nouveau style brass sunflower stamp box, okay? Um, and if you come down, they've actually given an honest description. Um, well, there you go. Beautiful vintage solid brass desktop desk stamp box. It reprodu reproduces an Art Nouveau style with a sunflower and sunday stems and leaves forming a pierced lid. Inside there are two recesses for stamp or any other small items. It's unmarked but believed made by past times in the 1980s, which it was. Um, as you see here, it's nice to see somebody actually genuinely selling it as it is. But every dealer I know just takes off the labels and sells them as vintage. Nobody sells them as past times because no one will buy them. Um, but they are, just be careful, don't overpay for these ones because they are done by past times in and the company started in 1986 I think by the same man who created the early learning center anyway moving back on to my beautiful stamp box here that I bought I'm gonna price that up for about 35 to 40 pound and see what offer I get this is a period one and this is a beautiful example 10 pound 35 to 40 pound that's the difference I won't, probably won't achieve that price, but that's the price I'm going to ask. Um, probably achieve 20 plus, but uh, either way, it's a really nice item. Um, and I just absolutely adore it. But just don't fall in the trap and overpay for these. Okay, guys, moving on. I don't normally show you something when I'm not 100% on what it is, but this is absolutely spectacular. Now, this is cranberry overlaid glass vase. Um, and I'm not convinced on what it is yet now my initial feeling was when I purchased it was it was a really nice quality piece of Czech or bohemian glass however the more and more I'm looking at it um, the more I'm thinking it might be English now I know a lot of the English companies Waterford and so on done this uh, type of overlaid glass and the quality and the weight it's, it's not far off this little preserved pot or vase and cover, it's got to be three quarters of a kilo. And you can hear, you can hear that sound. It's absolutely spectacular. It's a stunning piece, and this looks like an English pattern, to be honest with you. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to post some pictures up later, and I'm hoping uh, one of the uh, people in my group will be able to help identify it. Um, the easy thing, obviously, is to just say it's Bohemian, mid-century, or Czechoslovakian, um, but I'm not convinced one way or the other. Now, if it's Czechoslovakian, I can tell you now, the prices are going to be about £30, £35 for a quality piece like this, and it really is quality. If this is English by Waterford or something, this could be £100, That is the difference. But it is such a beautiful piece. Uh, normally you buy this stuff and it's pressed glass so it's you know it's quite lightweight this really is a really nice piece and I'm really shocked I was I was expecting to find a signature I'll be honest with you um, really nice uh, example here cost me a fiver and one way or another there's a damn good profit on there either way it's not going less than 30 35 pound but I need to find out if it's English or if it's a Czech example and for me not to be convinced then it's a possibility so that's that one guys and I absolutely adore it next piece moving on as you know I've been buying a lot of vintage toys in the shop and we have a beautiful I can't even pronounce it it's an Italian uh, racing car and it's produced by Tonka and the steering wheel works the wheels and believe it or not these little levers here you turn them round and you can actually lift the bonnet off 
How would you do it, Dammy? There. So they've all got to go like that. And the bonnet actually comes off. They actually work to hold the bonnet in place like a normal bonnet lever. Which I think is quite cool, to be honest with you. So, I got myself there a nice little Italian sports car in die cast. I'll put that back on tidy in a minute. Now this cost me three pounds this weekend and we're gonna have a little look now if there's any on eBay. I don't know if it is, I haven't done any research, but I can tell you now in the shop it's gonna be about 20 pounds, 18, 20 pounds, something like that, just as a novelty piece in the shop. But we'll have a little look, see if they're on eBay and see whether or not I'm way out on the price. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so I've typed it in Tonka Polistil, I, I can't even pronounce it to be totally honest with you. And um, these are the options I've had come up in sold listings. Now, these are some of the prices of the Tonka cars. And um, the exact one is here. I just looked now and I found it. And it's actually not a million miles from where I was thinking, but theirs is boxed. Theirs comes in a box in a scale of one to six. I don't know what size that actually equals. Um, mine is one to 16, so I think mine's bigger. I think that means bigger, but we'll have a little look now. See the size on this one? Mine's about eight to 10 inches long. Uh, does this say size? No, they just say, oh, it is 1 to 16, so it's the exact same as what I got, 1 to 16. And they are £17 plus postage, so in the shop, 20 quid, somebody will buy it, happy days. So that'll be alright for 3 quid. Okay, my final lot in today's video. Um, I made a video about it um, just recently. I uh, can't remember whether I put it in a video as my car boot sale buys. Now, down in Splot Market, um, about two or three weeks ago, I bought um, a solid silver picture frame. Now, it didn't have no glass. It was stinking dirty. This was black. All the velvet was minging. And I done a video yesterday on restoring it, which was basically cleaning it, buying new glass, washing the velvet. And that is the finished article. Now, this cost me £20. Um... And as you can see, it's quite spectacular. It's a large one. It's about 12, 14 inches tall and in now mint condition. No dents to the silver, brand new piece of glass. All the velvet is washed and clean. And for £20, absolute steal. So that was my uh, final one. And I'm going to show you some prices of antique uh, frames now. And I hope I said frame, picture frame, not mirror. My head's been up my backside lately. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of antique fr uh, picture frames, silver ones, and some of the modern ones. And just so you can see the prices. But I did do a video on cleaning that and everything. So if you want to see that, that's actually on my page. Okay, so you can see the uh, dearest one year is 525. Now, they do go up into the thousands, but I've searched UK only. You got one year from two uh, from 1903 for 250 pounds, uh, 205 pounds, 161 for a 10 inch, 151, and then you start coming down to the modern ones. That one's a uh, early 20th century, 114, but they're small, seven by five, 99 pounds, uh, 99 pound. Now the one I got, I dated yesterday in my film, was 1988. This one, 8 by 6 £95, and that's a modern one, guys. Um, I think I'm going to be putting about 125 145 on mine and wait for a best offer. Just quickly to the original listing. Does it say a date on this one? It's only a 6 by 8 so that's really small. Uh, Date-wise, I don't think they've dated it. Nope, they haven't dated it. But it comes supplied in gift boxes. Ah, oh, there's a modern one because the normal retail price is £135 and it is literally 7.5 inches by 9.5 inches, so half the size of what I got. So £125, £145 is about a fair price for the one I got fully restored. 
all in all guys um some beautiful beautiful things i know it's not another r2d2 log burner but that was spectacular you don't find things like that every day absolutely love the stamp box love the grog i tell you what this could turn out to be something quite special um i'm going to ask for some help on that one my picture frames are outstanding and as you see or some of the other bits of work in stock but all in all really nice items again i'm super pleased and it's just good quality stock coming in all the time at really good prices so what more can i say i hope you've enjoyed the uh, film today guys and hopefully there's a few tips there you can pick up and hopefully make a bit of money thanks for watching if you have enjoyed i would really appreciate a like and a share bye guys